Okay, somebody on Troy's Inkscape board wanted to know how to change this little Pikachu to a to an SVG or a trace. So I was just going to show how I would do that. Um, we need to first do trace bitmap. So I'll go to path, trace bitmap. Now a lot of people would do this on colors, and um, I tried it with colors first and found actually that it works better with brightness cutoff. Uh, the brightness cutoff is a single scan. The default threshold is usually set at 0.45, so we'll just see what that does. Update. Okay, you can see from this um, preview here, I'll just go ahead and do it so we can see. It did a pretty good job tracing, except it turned everything that was red to black, which we don't want. So, let's try this again, but decrease the threshold. Let's try 0.42. Okay, that was a little bit better. We'll do it again. You can see it traced the hat this time, but it still got his cheeks as being black. And we could fix that um, if we wanted to, but let's just go ahead and decrease the threshold a little more. All right, now his cheeks aren't black. Let's try that. Okay, that's a pretty good outline right there. All right. Now what I'm going to do, because this outline is fairly thin, I'm just going to go ahead and do an outset on it to make it a little thicker. So um, I can go path outset, all right, that makes it thicker. I'm going to undo it, and I'll show you if if your path is too thick or it doesn't thicken up enough, you go to edit, preferences, and if you click on behavior and then steps, that lets you change your inset outset. So right now mine is set at one pixel, and that actually seemed to work well. Now instead of doing path outset, I can just use the keyboard shortcut, which is control shift zero. No, just control zero. There we go. Control zero. All right, so there's our, our nice outline. And now what we need to do is use the paint bucket to fill in these pieces. So without being, without anything being selected, like right now the outline is selected, I'm going to click off of it and then click on the paint bucket. I'm going to close my trace bitmap window and I'm going to open the fill panel which is control shift F. All right, so now my fill panel is open. Um, okay, on the paint bucket I'm set to fill by visible colors, threshold 46, and I have it, the grow set to 0.5 pixels which means it's just going to expand the fill a little bit over the outline, which I think will work pretty well. When you're using the paint bucket, you want to be zoomed in fairly close because it fills better if you're zoomed in. All right, I have no idea what, my, what color my paint bucket is set to, so I'm just going to click, and it's set to white. All right, so you can't see, but if I click on the selector tool, you can see that it filled, it just filled with white. But that doesn't matter. I'm just clicking Control Z to get it back where it was. Now, with that still selected, I'm going to click on the little eyedropper tool and then come over here to my original image and click to pick that color. All right. Now my paint bucket, if I click back on it, is set to, you can see down here, is set to that color red, so I can just go ahead and fill in those parts. All right. My paint bucket is still set to red, but instead of going to the trouble of like trying to pick a color, I'm just going to fill this part red, then click on my eyedropper, and then click over here to change its color to gray and then I'm going to fill in all the things that are gray. And I'll do the same thing. I'll do his cheek. I'll just go ahead and fill it gray, and then change its color to, to red. All right, same thing with his tongue, the picker there. All right, and now I'll fill in this part and change it to yellow. This, this. Okay. All right, so there he is filled, and we can get rid of the original image now because we're done picking colors from that. All right, um, this black outline, we want to be a solid black if you were going to layer um, vinyl. So what we're going to do, first of all, I'm going to put it back where it was. Uh, we're going to break it apart and then union it back together, but before we do that, I want to fill in these parts right here, and then I'll use them to subtract out of the black background. So I'll show you, well, first I'll just do it and show you. I'm going to change that to a different color that's not used anywhere else in the, in the um, 
in the drawing. I'll change it to this purple color. And then I'll click back on the paint bucket and fill that guy in too. Okay. All right, so now what I'm going to do, I'll show you over here first, and then I'll put it back and do it all behind Pikachu so I don't have to line it back up again. Oh, one thing I forgot to do, I need to fill in his eyes. All right, so again on the paint bucket, I'll fill in his eyes, and then I'll go and select both of those and change them to white. While I've got them both selected, I might as well go ahead and union them together, so path union. Okay, now the two eyes are one object. All right. Okay, so now back to the background. I'll show you over here. I go to path, break apart, and then path, union. I did combine, not union. Let me select them all again. Path, union. Okay. Um, I don't know where that part came from. Let me try again. I think that was left over from when I was playing with it before. Path union. All right. So now it's a solid black. All right. But I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to undo that. And I'm just going to do that same thing, but I'm going to leave it behind him. I'm just going to select the black, go to path, break apart. Now all the black stuff is what's selected. Path union. All right. So now that's a solid black outline. Now I'm going to pick these two purple things. I'm going to union those together and also hold down the shift key and select the black. And now I'm going to do path difference. And that cuts those little black, those little parts out. Okay. So that is Pikachu. Now if you select him and hit control shift R, it'll automatically size your document so it just fits Pikachu. And you can save that and load it into Design Space, and it'll be all ready to go. Um, one other thing you probably would want to do is select all of the same colors and union them together like we did the eyes. So if I select the yellow and then right click and say Select Same Fill Color, all the yellow parts are selected, and I can union them together. All right, now all of those are together. Same for the red. Select same, fill color, path, union. All right, now the hat's all together. Do the same for the gray, path, union, and then his cheeks. You can also just hold down shift if there's not too many. All right, is that everything? We got the gray, we got the red, we got the yellow, we got his cheeks, his eyes we already did. Okay. Now he's ready to save and cut. I hope that helps you. Thanks for watching.